The REACH programme is set out to improve water security for 10 million vulnerable people in Africa and Asia. The initial target was 5 million people, but we performed well in the early years of the programme, and they sort of said, with a little bit more money, could you double the target, which we agreed to. This is not a common type of programme. Academics don't normally do this type of work. And so we've been working for, for 10 years as an interdisciplinary international research programme to have real world impacts on the ground. We were very lucky to have funding that enabled us to engage with policymakers at the outset so that we could go to countries and start to work with them and work out what are their priorities as policymakers, what do they need to know and what do we have expertise in that match well with that. So we have made good progress with our partnerships and then the cost is less than one US dollar per person per year and then we can reallocate existing money which may be not being spent wisely into this type of program and get a very positive outcome. An estimated 2.1 billion people don't have access to safe and managed drinking water in their home. And we know with climate change that it's getting harder to manage this. A lot of these systems are not climate resilient at the moment. They're not able to provide safe water throughout the year, for example. In the rainy season, they won't work, or in the dry season, they'll run out of water. Most of the school and healthcare facilities, their water system also maintained by the school authority, but they don't have fund to repair and maintenance because funding is a crisis for, for them as well. If we make sure that people start paying some water charge, then they can demand accountability that we are paying for water and why is it not coming. And if they raise the issues, if they complain, and if the government department is able to pull up the contractor and says why is the water not coming, then that would be a success of a result-based financing. Climate change is intensifying the water cycle so that we're seeing it's harder to manage water to make sure that it is reliable, to make sure that it is, um, is safe as well. Water affects all aspects of our lives. So what we see is if there's a drought, children are missing school to go and spend more time collecting water. So as we see more issues around water scarcity, there's a risk of more children missing school. We see with floods, there's potential for destruction of infrastructure, for people not being able to access it and that's going to, you know, reduces their access to their assets and it makes it harder for them to get out of poverty. So we have examples across the world where water policy has been able to cope with variability in water availability. So we can learn from that and make sure with good governance that we are able to manage these climate change impacts on water to get benefit for everyone. We're in conversations in terms of how they can think through and have more sustainable, more empirical models that mean that there'll be better results for decades to come. So at Oxford we had that network already, so it helped to bring in people from all different disciplines, different countries as well, to expand that thinking and to get involved in the countries and what was happening. We can show that it's more affordable than people think, we can show how to get there, and um, we're doing that in Bangladesh. So our goal now is to accelerate the work from the 10 million people we've already provided improved water security for to accelerate that to 100 million by 2030. Based on our experience and expertise, we think we can scale this up to many more countries in the future.